regulations, laws, and rules. Do they drive you effing nuts? Because they do me. So today, in today's Tiny House Friday, I put together a whole list of questions which are sort of centered around the topic of regulations and the law and tiny houses, obviously. And I've tried to answer some of your questions in regards to where you can part these things and, and what you need to do to, um, to stay compliant with the law. So hopefully it helps, let me know. G'day guys, Adam Simmons here for Tiny House Fridays this week. Uh, we're gonna do a Q&A today. So I've had a few questions come through from people, um, a few different ones here. Uh, first one we're gonna start off with comes from Jennifer. She wants to know, where are you going to live in your tiny house? So as some of you probably already know, my wife and I were gonna move, we're currently living in Perth, Western Australia, and we're gonna move down south. So down towards Margaret River, down by the wine region down there. Um, we absolutely love it down there, it's, it's gorgeous. So we're gonna head down there and um, we're gonna park up on someone else's land initially. We're gonna rent some land. Um, we haven't found the land as yet, but we're gonna approach some landowners. Um, basically, there's, there's two ways we're gonna approach it. We're either gonna send letters out to people who have property that we like in the area, and we're gonna ask them if we can rent off them and park our, our caravan slash tiny house on their land in exchange for some money. Um, it may be up to $100 a week or so, depending on where it is. Um, the other option though, is to actually look online on websites like realestate.com.au and look for people who are advertising their house for rent. Now the benefit with this is if you find houses that are for rent in the area that you want, um, people are already looking for an income from their house. So when you're approaching them with an offer to pay them for parking on, on their property, you're essentially meeting their needs. That they're after some money, you're offering them some money. The only caveat being they probably need to have a bigger property in order for you to live in your tiny house and not disturb um, the other people who end up renting the house on that property. But that's another approach we're gonna take because we're going sort of semi-rural. So there will be properties that'll be, you know, over a thousand square meters in the area. So that's the first question. Thanks Jennifer for the question. I hope that sort of answers your question. Um, next question comes from Emma and she asks, are there any special building regulations specific to tiny houses? Now this is a very big question and it's very complicated, but I'll do my best to break it down and make it as simple as possible. Essentially, there's not special building regulations for tiny houses because they're so new. Most councils don't even know what a tiny house is. So, um, essentially, there's two ways, two ways this can go. If you want to park your tiny house on a property and you want it to be a permanent dwelling that sort of sits there, it's plumbed into the sewerage, it has power going to it, um, it's essentially a small outbuilding or an ancillary dwelling as they call it, um, then the answer is you will need to get planning approval from the council. So your best bet is to call the council, tell them of your plan, um, and then submit a building permit with the help of a surveyor or an architect or someone like that. Um, and it's very similar to, to building a granny flat or any other type of ancillary accommodation. So that's one approach, and that's, that's probably the most common approach to do it the proper way, follow the, you know, the, follow the law properly. The other approach which some people take is to make it, when you build your tiny house, build it completely off grid. So in saying that, I mean you have a composting toilet, so you don't need to plumb into sewerage. You have off grid power such as solar on the roof, um, and you have gas for cooking and things like that. That way you don't need to plug into any mains utilities and you can park it anywhere and move it anytime you want. Um, so with that approach, it's still, in most areas in Australia, you're still not allowed to park and live in it full time. So in, in Western Australia, for example, um, you're allowed to live in a caravan for up to 90 days. So you can't live in it full, t full time by law, um, but you can live in it for 90 days if it's a caravan. So yeah, if you want to live in it full time, basically you need to get plenty of approval. 
Um, even if it's off grid and it's a caravan, it's it's just one of those things. Um, there are people that do it illegally and essentially move it around, and you know that's been around for a long, long time. It's nothing new, but um, yeah, that's that's the short of it, really. Because it's such a new thing, councils don't really understand what it is, and there's not enough people doing it for them to really address it as an issue. But I'm sure th things will change as time goes on. So that's um, I hope that sort of answers that question, Emma. Um, and the last question I've got here is where can you park a tiny house? Um, another great question. We all have that problem, obviously, when we start building our tiny house. So essentially, you can park a tiny house wherever you like. It's a caravan, so wherever a caravan will fit, you should be able to fit a tiny house. Obviously, you need the extra height because caravans are only typically, you know, two and a half to three meters high, whereas a um, tiny house can be over four. So as long as you have the, um, the length, and the height, then you're, you're gonna be fine there. Um, and then as far as parking it full time and living in it, it that refers back to our, our previous question. Um, so with our plan, initially we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna rent some land um, and it's gonna be temporary. So we're not actually gonna seek um, any approvals from the council. We're just gonna ask the owners if we can park on their land I mean, what, it is a little bit easier because it is rural where we're going. So, you know, the properties are typically acres, you know, tens of acres. So we can quite easily go up into a corner of their land, not disturb anyone or anything. And we'll be completely off grid. We're not going to disturb the land or any surrounding um, properties. So in that instance, it's quite easy. But um, in a city environment, it's really, it's really a case of getting the planning approval and doing it doing it the right way. So um, that's about it for today. I hope that sort of helps you guys and and um, answer some of your questions. If you have any more questions, just um, get in touch, leave us a message on Facebook or Instagram or flick us an email. We'd love to hear from you. I like answering you guys' questions because it means I'm actually giving you value. Um, it's important to me to help you guys um, realize your dream of tiny house, tiny house living because it's what I'm passionate about. So yeah, don't stop asking me questions, submit your questions and um, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, so that's it for this week, guys. I hope it helps. Let me know in the comments below and um, I'll speak to you next time.